everyone. This is the third lecture in the summer preparation series on probability. Today we will talk about set operation rules. Set operation rules are simple mathematical equations for calculating set operations efficiently and quickly. There are technically four rules, but the first one is so obvious, we're just going to skip it. The subtraction rule is basically how you calculate not or a complement, and uh, it is so obvious. It's basically the definition of the not operation, so we're not going to elaborate any further because there's nothing else to talk about. Uh, we will talk about three rules today. Addition rule, conditional probability rule, multiplication rule. These are for these other three operations, or given and and. Starting with the addition rule for or or union. So recall that union is either a circle, so it's a very inclusive operation. So as long as you like chocolate or peanuts, you don't have to like both. We will include you in the result of the union. Um, so anything that's covered by the yellow highlight is included in the result. We also talk about how when we calculate union, we basically add um, the left circle with the right circle, but then we have to subtract um, the, in the overlap or the intersection in the middle. So this is the calculation from last lecture. And how can we represent this idea more generally so we have an equation that we can use for anything and not just chocolate or peanuts? Okay, so this is a sort of a more um, formal expression of union um, calculation using the addition rule. So union is really about adding up p of x and p of y together, and then we have to subtract the intersection or x intersection y. So this is the intersection or the overlap. You have to take that out. Um, and that's basically the formal expression of the union equation or what we call the addition rule. So thinking about the addition rule, see if you can apply it to calculate the probability of getting either two or three in one um, dice roll. I want you to think about this for a few minutes, we will come to the solution at the end of the lecture. Here's another way of applying the addition rule. So let's see if you can calculate the probability of rolling an even number when you roll a dice. Okay, again, the clue is that you can use the addition rule and uh, we will reveal the solution at the end of the lecture. The next rule that we're going to talk about is the conditional probability rule for conditional probability or what we call given. Recall that if we want to know um, the probability that our customers will like peanuts, given that they already like chocolate, what we do is we um, express this as P given C and we divide the intersection, which is four over here, by the new sample space. So the new sample space, 24, is the size of C. Okay. So that will always be our denominator. And um, so C is the new sample space, and that is 24, so that's why we use as a denominator. This is how we calculate um, conditional probability in this example of peanuts and chocolate. So how do we represent this more universally or more generally so we can use it to calculate any conditional probability? So this is how we represent it more generally. Y given X, you know, X is the new sample space, so that becomes the denominator over here. And uh, we, the numerator is the intersection. Okay, so that's your conditional probability rule. 
it is really just a general statement of what we already defined as uh, conditional probability. Okay, so always remember the denominator is the sample space, the new sample space. Finally, we'll look at the multiplication rule. Again, you will see that the multiplication rule is actually not new at all. It's just a derivation of the conditional probability, and we can use that to calculate the probability of AND, or intersection. So in this case, um, when we look at the chocolate versus peanuts example, the intersection probability was given to you. It's 4%. We already knew that from the beginning. However, sometimes it's not known. So in this particular case, it's a known probability. What if the intersection is not known? Um, well, if you're lucky and you know other types of probabilities, maybe you can use those probabilities to calculate the intersection. So that's what the multiplication rule is, is when um, this is unknown, so you don't know the intersection, you don't know what this size is. However, you already know the conditional probabilities and you know the probability of one of these um, uh, sets, then you can maybe be able to use these values to estimate the intersection. Now, this is condition, uh, this is the probability condition uh, of uh, having chocolate given that the, uh, the customer already likes peanuts. And then we use this conditional probability and multiply that with the probability of peanuts. And that will give us intersection. You might wonder why. So the next slide, I'll show you why. I also want to show you that we can also do it the other way around. We can say peanuts given um, chocolate and then multiply it by the probability of chocolate. So again, you can see this number is always connected to the new sample space. Um, and this is connected to the condition, okay? So either way, we'll give you the same value for the intersection, but the question is why? Why do we have this equation? Okay, so the multiplication rule, like I said, is derived from the conditional probability rule. This is the conditional probability rule, so let's start with that. So the conditional probability of y given x is the intersection, remember this is the intersection, divided by the probability of x. So if that's the case, if we take the intersection and just move the conditional probability to the right of the equation, then we can maybe be able to calculate the intersection, right? So now this is on the right. P of X stays on the right-hand side of the equa equal sign. And then when we do this, because we move the uh, conditional probability from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, so when we move the division um, sign, we have to change it to multiplication, and that's it. So now, by simply doing a little bit of transformation of the conditional probability rule, now we have the multiplication rule. By multiplying the conditional probability of y given x with the probability of x multiplied together, we can get the value of intersection. So again, hopefully, if you're comfortable with algebra, you will know that the multiplication rule and the conditional probability rule are exactly the same thing. We're just moving things around so that we can calculate different values. This, again, is what we call the multiplication rule. We can also express it using y as the condition. Okay, so you just have to remember that the condition has to stay the same across the equation. So that's all. To summarize, we have seen three set operation rules, the addition rule, the conditional probability rule, and the multiplication rule.
Now let's take a look at the Google Sheet examples. So a very simple example. So you want to go to S3 rules. And over here, you will see the same table, the chocolate versus peanut table, but now we express it more generally as X, not X, Y, not Y. And we have these values, the intersection, we have the conditional probabilities, and so on and so forth. So what we can do is we can um, actually try the addition rule, con conditional probability rule, and multiplication rule right here. The addition rule is for union. So this is supposed to be P of X, which is right here, P of X is here. Okay, P of Y is here, 24. So these two numbers can be added together and then we will um, subtract the intersection, which is the blue region over here. So the intersection is four. So you will see this number is P of X right here. P of Y and P of X um, added together, and then we subtract this number divided by 100, and this is how we get our union using the addition rule. The conditional probability rule allows you to calculate Y given X. Okay, so Y given X is over here is 0.25, and it is basically the intersection Four divided by P of X, which is over here. So this is intersection divided by P of X, and that's basically the definition of conditional probability. The multiplication rule says that if you don't know this number, right now it is known, four is known. However, if you don't know that, if you know the probability of Y given X over here, 0.25, Okay, so your E3 is this cell. Then you can multiply it by P of X, which is 16 over here. You multiply these two together, divide it by 100, and you will be able to get this number, which is 0.04, or 4, right here. This addition rule over here, okay, so you... The union is actually, as we discussed last time, is actually also just this A, um, this A, B, and C. These three values added together will give you union. So that's what I did. I added these three numbers together, and they give me 36%. Exactly the same value that I get using the addition rule to calculate union. So now all these numbers correspond. Isn't math beautiful? Now let's go back to the questions that I posed earlier in the lecture. The probability of getting both two and three in one roll uh, of dice. So think about two and three. So the probability of getting two is 16.7%. The probability of getting three is also 16.73. So they have the same probability. Um, so this is P of X, P of Y. Okay. And this is union, which is the intersection between the two. So we are trying to figure out what's the intersection between the two. However, from this graph pie chart, you will see that there's actually zero overlap between the two. They do not overlap at all. Uh, in other words, we will call these two events mutually exclusive, meaning that they have a um, two um, circles like this. So when you draw a Venn diagram of um, two and three, these two circles will actually have zero overlap with each other. So both of them have one sixth chance of, um, you know, happening. However, because it's impossible for both of them to show up in one 
costs, this intersection is actually zero. So you can actually figure out this using um, the multiplication rule. So if you want to figure out the, the, the intersection and you don't know what the intersection is, you can ask the question of what's the probability of getting a two given that you already got a three? Okay, the answer is zero because if you got three, you're not gonna get two. So we know this probability is zero and the probability of x is one over six, but anything um, multiplied with zero will give you a zero. So the probability of the overlap is zero, indicating that they are two mutually exclusive events. Okay, so this is just a very complicated way to get to the answer of zero, but I wanna show you that the multiplication rule actually works. What's the probability of getting either two or three? Okay, so this is the um, union. Again, this is applying the, the addition rule. So you will add P of X and P of Y together. Each one, both of them are one six. So you can add them up together. However, these two events do not overlap. So the intersection is zero over here. So when we calculate the union, it's basically one six plus one six minus zero. So there's no overlap, nothing to subtract. So we again get two six, and again, these two are mutually exclusive um, events. So when you apply the addition rule, all you have to do is actually just add these two probabilities up. What's the probability of rolling an even number? So even numbers are two, four, and six. And hopefully by now you know that these are mutually exclusive events. So when I um, do in the two or four or six, then I can just apply the addition rules together and there's zero um, overlap. And so we add these three events up together and we get three divided by six. Did you get these answers correct? If you want to get more practice with set operation rules, you can go to the course website and look under the section, their um, additional practices on Khan Academy, uh, mostly on addition rule. There's also a little quiz you can take. So to recap, what did we learn today? We learned three rules, the addition rule, conditional probability rule, and the multiplication rule. You have any questions, feel free to contact me at rachel.chang at mason.wm.edu. I'm always happy to answer any questions you have or elaborate anything that you need clarification on.